when you develop a video game, you have ideas about what is going to be unique and essential to the experience. And we knew that the idea of choices that matter that would be something important in Mass Effect. We wanted it to be realistic science fiction, Casey was really big on that. He wanted it to be something where you could imagine it, that it could be possible. The vision that we had was uh, that we would tell this story over the course of a trilogy of games. The progress from the player carried through from one title to the next, which is something we hadn't really seen much before. The heart of Mass Effect is humanity. Stories that are science fiction stories, but are human stories and are relatable stories and touch people. I mean, Mass Effect was special because it was the big space opera that I always wanted to play in with spaceships and, and aliens and big battles. It was everything that I loved growing up in video game form. Everywhere I've traveled, I can see the N7 hoodie with the stripe and sort of take pride in all different people from different creeds and colors are wearing this merchandise that directly reflects my own blood, sweat, and tears that went into it, and that is super rewarding. When the original Mass Effect launched on the 360, I don't think anyone was quite prepared for what it would mean for the future of the RPG genre or just how big the fan base for this game would be. Edmonton's kind of up in the middle of nowhere. We're up in Canada and it's hard for us to kind of feel that energy. It's not until you go down to some of the conventions or get feedback from people how important this is. The people who cosplay, the people who go to conventions, the people who are really interested in bringing our worlds to life. If it weren't for Mass Effect, my life would be pretty different. It gave me a sense of companionship and friendship and adventure and unity, something I felt like I was lacking for my real life. I really needed that distraction, that exploration, and just that excitement. And these things, we, we don't think about them when we're making the games, but these stories really become ultimately the reason why we want to make games. It takes you anywhere you want to go. It's kind of amazing. And it was brave and adventurous in some really awesome ways. Different people and relationships coming together for a common cause even if they all don't get along. Nobody's better than anybody else. Nobody's worse or less deserving than anyone else. And that is a direct reflection to what we hope for humanity. Shepard means everybody gets a chance and everybody gets represented and everybody gets to fight and play in the way that they choose. There is no one Commander Shepard. You can't say, oh, Commander Shepard is like this, Commander Shepard is like that. Everybody's Shepard is going to be different. We were always sort of trying to fighting to sort of zero in on. What is that sort of box within which, you know, Shepard should exist? Is it two Renegade or two Paragon? We really wanted to have an iconic character with armor and just an overall look that you, you would be able to recognize. We knew Shepard was important and we knew it was, we were in it for the long haul. I mean, I think we did something like 400 helmets for Shepard, play 50 to 60 armor variations. And there was one that had the N7 type stripe and some kind of an insignia along the side. I actually just put N7 on there and we didn't really know how important it was gonna be, but what it really did was it resonated with the players and took on a life of its own. The way that we shot Shepard and the Normandy was very classic hero. He or she always felt like they were huge and this massive hero. Uh, when it came to the Normandy, we used to try to shoot it like a, like a car commercial. We designed the ship to look like a Concorde, but when we were actually doing the, the painting of it, we based it more on American muscle cars. So I had SST on there, and that wasn't gonna work. So I approached writing, and it came back with this SSV. I go, so the Normandy's coming along, it's flying through space, and all of a sudden Saren's evil ship comes and you have to evade it. Well, that's not gonna work, is it? So then we end up coming up with SR1. Our writing came up with that, and it turned out really well. I mean, if Bioware has any kind of special juice, I think that characters are our special juice. They carry the story, they let our players immerse themselves in the world. Without the characters, people wouldn't have the attachment that they do with Mass Effect. One of my favorite stories was when we released Mass Effect 3, there was a person who was live streaming, and he got to that moment where Morden is ascending the tower, and he stopped talking. He just stopped cold. I don't think he was ready or prepared for that character to go away. You know, we call these characters uh, your virtual friends. And for some people, they are more meaningful as entities than, than the mere experiences that they have with them. Having a blank slate is one of those things that is both freeing and terrifying. 
with Mass Effect 1, there were no characters created. There were no species created. We didn't have anything. We, we had to invent it all. They took forever to do because just one line in his description made it very hard to concept. They said in that line, he's a romance option, and that just threw us a curveball. Plus also, everybody found out we were basing him off a fish, which uh, not many people think of a fish as a romance option. Romances are some of the most difficult scenes to work on. How do you make out with the Turian without, you know, razor blading your face off? The approach that we all took with it is, they're people first, romance is second. One of the gifts that I think I was given was being able to write our first gay squad mate for male Shepherd. I was on a panel and a guy cosplaying Shepard pulled me aside and said, playing Caden was an important part of my journey in coming out to my parents. That is a real gift to a writer to know that you have contributed to their life and somehow that has made their life better. I can't think of a lot of careers and jobs where you get to meet and connect with fans like that. Mass Effect was something special when, when it comes to that. We started off with a grand vision, and as we went through, it was amazing to see all of those dreams actually fulfilled. It really is an honor to have worked on something that has touched so many people's lives. The future of Mass Effect, I think, is really bright. People just want to know more about this place, these characters. And I think people keep coming back because it feels like home. We just love the idea of creating worlds and letting people continue to enjoy the worlds that we create. Seeing this universe just continue to expand has just been an amazing experience and something I'll never forget. And I hope, you know, our, our fans will never forget it too. One of my favorite memories was having Mark Muir create what the Vorcha were gonna sound like. They are essentially space cannon fodder <laughs> uh, who take themselves very seriously. We wanted them to sound, you know, kind of liquidy. So <laughs> Mark just grabbed a water bottle and started speaking with the water in his throat. Ah, human! And that's how the Vorcha came to be.